Hello everyone. I'm Dr. M. V. Chandrakant. I'm a medical oncologist from Narana Hospital, Kolkata. Today I would present on uh, salivary gland cancers, and I would present on two molecules, aperitone acetate and iatronans retinoic acid in this setting. So before I go to the presentation, we can have a background knowledge that salivary gland cancers and breast cancers are biologically similar, morphologically similar. Also, they have similar molecular targets. So if you look into a cry of a baby can cause milk secretion, similarly a thought of a tasty food causes saliva secretion. So they have similar behavior as well. So the first study will be the role of abiraterone acetate in patients who have androgen receptor expressing salivary gland cancers who have progressed on uh, prior androgen therapy deprivation. So what is abiraterone acetate? So if you look into any androgen receptor expressing cancer cell, the first thing what we do is we try to get down the androgen levels to the below normalcy. For example, the level of castrate resistant testosterone is less than 50, what we take as. So we get down the level of testosterone to less than 50. So after getting it down, the androgen receptor expressing cancer cells do respond to this for some time. So around six months to one year, they usually respond. After that, they become castrate resistant. They're not androgen resistant, but they are castrate resistant. In spite of having castrate levels of testosterone, these cells start progressing. So it is then we look into inhibiting other sources of androgen, like the androgen coming from the adrenal gland. So abiraterone acetate is a drug that inhibits adrenal androgen synthesis. So it inhibits an enzyme 617. So when this is inhibited, you will see less cortisol levels you will see less testosterone level, but the pregnenolone gets channeled towards the aldosterone pathway. Therefore, you will see higher aldosterone levels. Therefore, the side effect of abiraterone acetate is hyperaldosteronism sort of a picture like edema and hypertension. And uh, you will see low cortisol level. Therefore, we would always supplement abiraterone with prednisolone. Uh, to overcome the side effects. So if you look into the background, uh, uh, salivary gland cancer, breast cancer, prostate cancer are similar biologically. In terms of they express androgen receptor, they express estrogen receptor, progesterone receptor, and HER2. All the expressions are seen uh, in, uh, in these set of patients. So androgen receptor expression is seen up to 90% in salivary duct cancer and 20 to 30% of other uh, salivary gland cancers. And the evaluation of androgen receptor and HER2 receptor status is recommended in all salivary duct cancers by both NCCN and ASCO. And the androgen deprivation therapy as the treatment of choice is sort of well established in androgen receptor expressing salivary gland cancers. So the best approach after failure of androgen deprivation therapy in patients with salivary gland cancers is still unknown. So in prostate cancers post ADT, at the moment they became castrate resistant, we have abiraterone. Similarly here, this phase two study looked for the activity of abiraterone in those patients who have become castrate resistant. So this is a phase two study from 2015 to 19, had 24 patients with androgen receptor expression, all were salivary gland cancers, and they had progressed on previous androgen deprivation therapy. Abiraterone assisted one gram with prednisolone, five milligrams were given to all these patients. The overall response rate was 20% and the disease control rate was 60%. The progression-free survival median was 3.6 months and the median overall survival was 22 months. 
So remember, aberrated on state one gram is always given in empty stomach. So uh, this study was a positive study. This did show 20% response rate, disease control rate of 60%, progression free survival of 3.6 months, and the overall survival of 22 months. So, abiraterone plus LHRH agonist is active and safe as second line option in androgen receptor expressing castrate resistant salivary gland cancer. So, if you look at the baseline characteristics, uh, Parotid gland was the main site of disease in around 80% patients. Salivary duct cancer was the predominant histology in again 80% patients. And you could see multiple uh, uh, you know, sites being involved with metastasis. And 100% uh, patients had received previous androgen deprivation therapy. And chemotherapy was given nearly 80% patients before. So, the best response as, pro, uh, as uh, a partial response was seen in 13% and stable disease was seen in 80% patients. So these are the objective response rates of 21% and disease control rate of 62%. And irrespective of the previous response or duration to androgen deprivation therapy, there was responses to abiraterone acetate. The progression free survival 3.6 and overall survival 22 months. And you can see the lung and liver lesions regressing after given abiraterone acetate in these castrate resistant salivary gland cancers. So if you compare with enzalutamide, which is an anti-androgen, this has been used mainly in the castrate sensitive setting. And the overall response rate is around 4% and the progression free interval was five uh, months. So this is the, the responses are not that great like abiraterone, but the PFS is five months and this has been used in a castrate sensitive setting. In salivary gland cancer, there is a concern, especially in females, of the ARV7 mutation, which is androgen receptor mutation, which is not sensitive to anti-androgens. So this was a good study, uh, specifically addressing castrate resistant androgen receptor expressing salivary gland cancers. And the cons are that it is a small study, it's a phase two study, did not look at ARV7 mutation status and the quantification of AR was not available in this study. So well, uh, in the present day, uh, the take-home message is what we can have our number one is uh, all salivary gland cancers, we must do androgen receptor and HER2 testing, number one. Number two, androgen deprivation therapy is an established treatment in uh, AR expressing salivary gland cancers. And post androgen deprivation therapy, we have an excellent role of abiraterone acetate, you can see uh, good responses, disease stabilization and progression free interval uh, in these patients when you can use abiraterone acetate post progression on ADT. And mind you, we will continue ADT even after progression. So this is a phase two study that said that abiraterone acetate can be used even in salivary gland cancers who have become castrate resistant. The next study I'll be speaking uh, is the role of altrans retinoic acid in adenoid cystic carcinoma. So we all know adenoid cystic carcinoma is sort of the constitutes the greatest majority of uh, uh, salivary gland cancers. Nearly forty to fifty percent of them are adenoid cystic carcinomas, and it is unique in that it is known for extensive perineural invasion, in spite of surgical resection and radiation. 50% uh, of patients develop distant metastasis. And the, the way we treat this uh, adenoid cystic carcinoma is chemotherapy and multi-tyrosine kinase inhibitors like lenvatinib. And the hallmark translocation, what we find in adenoid cystic carcinoma is the MYBL1 NFIB fusion, that is translocation 6-9, which is seen in nearly 70% patients uh, we usually do by FISH. And we also can detect MYB1 expression 
MIB L1 expression on IHC, which is also found in nearly 80% patients. Uh, this, this sort of a fusion probably causes a differentiation arrest, just like um, acute poromyelocytic leukemia. So that is where uh, its role comes from. So the effective therapies for adenoid cystic carcinomas are actually lacking. Other than chemotherapy and multi-tyrosine kinase inhibitors, we don't have other great options. So this trial uh, uh, explored a novel agent, a novel therapy like Altrans retinoic acid, specifically addressing this setting. So this is how we treat malignant salivary gland cancers, which are metastatic uh, in the present day. We observe these patients, whether these patients are symptomatic, how fast the disease is progressing. If the patient has a fast progressing disease, uh, which needs treatment, what we take as disease progression within last one year, if it is happening, then these patients become eligible for systemic therapy. So we look into the histology, is it adenoid cystic carcinoma? If it is adenoid cystic carcinoma metastatic, the treatment options are first chemotherapy followed by multi-tyrosine kinase inhibitors like lenvatinib, which is preferred, sorafenib and axitinib. So what is the evidence for lenvatinib? Lenvatinib has a phase two study showing overall response rate of 15%, clinical benefit rate of 75% and the progression free survival of nearly one and a half years. So we all know how ATRA acts. ATRA causes the removal of differentiation block and results in uh, uh, apoptosis of the PML RARA expressing cells. So this is how uh, ATRA acts. It removes the differentiation block and uh, it has shown magical efficacy in acute promyelocytic leukemia setting. So in adenoid cystic carcinoma, what you can see is the typical translocation of translocation 6-9, the MYBL1 NFIB fusion, which is a hallmark translocation we see in this setting, which is seen in nearly 60% patients. So this is a phase two study, adenoid cystic carcinoma patients who had progressed in last 12 months, they required systemic therapy, 18 patients total, they all received ATRA. And remember, there were no responses in the study, 0% responses. 60% patients had disease stabilization. 50% patients were pre-treated with VEGF therapy. And the duration of stabilization was 3.7 months. And the progression-free survival was 3.2 months. Whereas the progression-free survival was 7.2 months in the low MIB expressing subgroup. So this trial did not meet its endpoint in terms of overall responses, uh, response rates to ATRA. However, if you look into the uh, disease stabilization, it was good and it was a low toxic treatment, uh, especially if you look into the low MIB expression, uh, expressing subgroup, um, this trial uh, did show reasonably good efficacy with ATRA. So if you look into the methods, they included adenoid cystic carcinoma patients who had progressed radiologically in less than 12 months of uh, previous uh, in, uh, therapy. And then they had two cohorts of either intermittent dosing or continuous dosing of ATRA. ATRA was dosed as 45 per meter square split dosing orally. And the primary endpoint was uh, response rates as per resist and secondary endpoints were safety and progression free survival. And they also looked into ATRA on uh, the impact of ATRA on MIB expression. So if you look into the baseline characteristics, this included salivary gland cancers uh, of all the sites and the previous lines of therapies was uh, up to one line in 61% patients and up to two lines in 40% patients. Uh, and, and then if you look into the previous therapies, nearly 44% patients had received previous VEGFR therapy. The VEGF TKIs were used in 44% patients. So if you look into the MIB expression, MIB low was in 20%. And the rest of the patients had MIB expression by IHC, nearly 80%. And then 
you also can look into the uh, mib nfib fusion which was again found in nearly 40% patients by fish uh, if you look into pdl1 expression or tumor mutation burden you know it was not there probably uh, uh, adenoid cystic carcinoma is an area which is not sensitive to immunotherapy because they have low pdl1 low cps and low tumor mutation burden and they are sort of driver mutation mediated disease in translocation 6 9 So, if you look into the responses, there were no responses in this trial. There was disease stabilization in nearly sixty percent patients. So, again, the similar thing showing that the responses were not there. The progression-free survival was three point two months, and uh, uh, you can see here the responses were not there, and only one patient remained on treatment on follow-up, and uh, this is a good slide. showing that uh, if you have a low mib expression the progression free survival is better with atra in this setting so the pros and cons of the study are the pros are that uh, it is a good study exploring a unique option like atra in salivary gland cancers uh, mib ihc and fish were done in all patients all these patients were heavily pretreated uh, uh, either one or two lines of therapy and vegf tki was used in nearly 50% patients and uh, patients who had required treatment who had progressed in last 12 months are the ones that were included they had a good selection criteria in the cons that it is a small phase to study so to conclude in the heavily pretreated adenoid cystic carcinoma of 18 patients there were mib ihc expression in 80% and mib 1 nfib fusion in 40% and the progression free survival of 3.2 months in the progression free survival especially in the low mib 1 expressing patients had 7.2 months and unfortunately there were no objective response rates at all with atra so the objective responses and the and the progression free survival was inferior to vegf tkis however in the select sub group of patients who have progressed on previous vegf tki and who have low mib expression atra looks to be a reasonable option which is a less toxic option so with this you know i would thank all of you for your patient listening uh, we have understood two drugs abiraterone acetate one and number two atra in the space of malignant salivary gland cancers thank you